Hello and welcome. In this lecture, I will discuss packet encapsulation and describe the packet format in ACI. ACI IVX LAN encapsulation. As I mentioned in section 2, ACI is an overlay technology that uses a custom VXLAN called IVXLAN, which stands for NCME VXLAN, for packet encapsulation. The IVXLAN encapsulation within the ACI fabric allows ACI to appear as a single switch to the outside world. ACI relies on the added outer header for forwarding while keeping the original internal header as is. IVXLAN uses a custom UDB destination port 48879 instead of the standard VXLAN UDB port 4789. It also uses the VXLAN header reserve bits to apply the PC tag concept for policy enforcement in ACI. For example, endpoint 1 sends traffic to endpoint 2. The traffic is received by the ingress leaf and encapsulated in IVXLAN packet. With additional flags in the IVXLAN header is used to determine the sender's EPG identity and whether the policy is applied. So as traffic enters the fabric, the ingress leaf encapsulates and applies policy to it, forwards it as needed across the fabric through a spine switch, and the egress leaf decapsulates the traffic before it exits the fabric. Within the fabric, ACI uses the ISIS protocol and the Council of Oracle protocol COOP for all forwarding of endpoint to endpoint communications. This enables all ACI fabric links to be active, equal cost multipath forwarding, and fast reconverging. All traffic that comes in the ACI fabric is normalized as IVXLAN packets. At the ingress leaf, ACI encapsulates external ANTAC traffic. VLAN tag traffic, VXLAN and MVGRE packets in an IVXLAN packet. So whatever traffic that received by the ACI fabric, it will be encapsulated in the IVXLAN packet. With the IVXLAN encapsulation, every packet in the ACI fabric carries ACI policy attributes that makes ACI be able to consistently enforce policy in a full distributed manner. So if the ingress leaf cannot apply the policy because it doesn't have information about the destination endpoint, then the egress leaf will be able to apply it. The additional IVXLAN encapsulation is 50 bytes, 8 bytes for IVXLAN header, plus 8 bytes UDB header, plus 20 bytes IP header, and 14 bytes frame header, or MAC header. We will see this in a second. Now, let's talk briefly about the functions of the ingress leaf, egress leaf, and spines. We will discuss each point later in depth. ACI ingress leaf functions are derived source EPG, I mean ingress traffic to EPG mapping, station lookup, find how to reach the destination endpoint via the local or global station tables. We will come to the station tables later. Policy lookup. Check if the source and destination endpoints are allowed to communicate. IVXLAN packet encapsulation. Add the outer header. And bounce. In case a local endpoint is moved to another leaf, update the station table to point out to the new location so that any incoming traffic to that endpoint will be bounced to the new location. We will come to this later as well. ACI egress leaf functions. VXLAN decapsulation or termination. Station lookup. If the source endpoint is not already learned, the egress leaf learns and adds the endpoints to the station table. It's important for the return traffic, right? Policy lookup. In case the policy is not applied in the ingress leaf, the egress leaf will apply it. And finally, egress port selection. Basically, find out the egress port towards the destination. ACI spine functions. Forward the IVXLAN encapsulated packets between leaf switches from the ingress leaf to the egress leaf. Proxy lookup. This happens when the ingress leaf switch doesn't know where the destination endpoint lives. In this case, the spine will do the proxy lookup and will find that information. We will see this later. And last thing is multicast route. When forward bump traffic in ACI, the spines play the root of the overlay multicast tree. Also, we will come to this later. Now let's talk about the ACI packet format. As we previously learned in section 2, 
each leaf switch has a V-tip assigned by the apex, which is used in the forwarding process in ACI. So leaf 1 here has 172.16.01, leaf 4 has 172.16.02, just for an example, okay? The VTIP address is chosen from the address pool that we already provided in the ACI fabric initial setup. So in our example here, let's say the address pool is 172.16.00/16. This VTIP address will be automatically configured in the loopback zero interface in each switch, where it is used for leaf-to-leaf -leaf reachability to forward the IVXLAN encapsulated packets. Let's have an example to see what the encapsulated packet format looks like. We will learn more about the following process later in this section. Here, we only focus on the packet format. We have endpoint 1 is connected to leaf 1 and endpoint 2 is connected to leaf 4. As you can see, endpoint 1 has an IP address 10.0.0.1, MAC address 0.1.1.1, and endpoint 2 has 10.0.0.2 and MAC address 0.2.2.2. We can see both endpoint 1 and 2 are in the same subnet, okay? Now endpoint 1 sends a packet to endpoint 4. This is how the original packet looks like. We call it the inner header. We have the payload is carried on the layer 3 IP packet and the IP packet is carried on the layer 2 frame or the MAC header. In case the original traffic is VLAN tagged, then the 802.1Q tag will be added. Here how the source and destination IP and MAC addresses should look like. The source IP address is 10.0.0.1, which is endpoint 1 IP. The destination IP address is endpoint 2 IP, the 10.0.0.2. This is expected in layer 2 or layer 3 forwarding. I mean, the IP addresses are always the sender and the receiver endpoint addresses, right? The source MAC address is always the MAC address of the endpoint interface. And the destination MAC can be either the destination endpoint MAC address like our scenario here, which is in case the source and the destination endpoints are in the same subnet. If not, then the destination MAC should be the endpoint gateway MAC address, regardless if the gateway is in the ACI fabric or not. If the gateway is in the ACI fabric, it will be the bridge domain MAC address, which is the configurable value I showed you in the previous section. Please keep in mind the original packet or the inner header is formed by the sender endpoint as you can see in the figure. Then leaf 1, the ingress leaf, receives the traffic. And it knows in which EPG the sender endpoint belongs to. Because we should have already created a static path binding for this interface. Otherwise, the traffic will be dropped. And the leaf is going to apply the policy in case the destination endpoint is known. Then it encapsulates the original packet with the IVXLAN outer header and sends it to a spine switch. As you can see in the figure. The outer header has an 8 bytes IVXLAN header, an 8 bytes UDP header, a 20 bytes outer IP header, and a 14 bytes Ethernet header or MAC header with 802.1Q tag. The 802.1Q tag is shown in the outer header because the links between the leaf and spine switches are routed sub-interfaces where they are tagged using the infra VLAN and they are IP unnumbered using the loopback zero interface. That means the 802.1Q tag is required. Also, the source and the destination IP addresses in the outer header are always the VTIP addresses where the source IP is the ingress leaf VTIP and the destination IP is the egress leaf VTIP, as you can see here. 172.16.01, the source IP, and 172.16.02, the destination IP in the outer IP header. The outer MAC addresses depend on the link used between the leaf and spine switches. They are changed on hop-by-hop -hop basis. So the one I show here is when the packet is received by the spine. Then when the spine send it to the egress leaf, the source MAC will be the spine interface MAC address and the destination MAC should belong to the egress leaf switch. The UDB header has the ACI custom destination port number 48879. The source port number is not a fixed value but hashed from the other field's values to provide a unique number for each flow, which helps in load balancing between the leaf and spine switches. 
just like the standard VXLAN technology. And finally is the IVXLAN header, which is an 8 bytes that contains the following SEI customized fields. We have the DL bit or don't learn bit, which informs the remote leaf that it should not perform data plane learning from this frame. Then we have the E bit, the exception bit. This bit is set when the frame has gone through proxy path to the spines. Then we have the S bit, the source policy applied bit. It indicates that the policy has already been applied to the frame in the ingress leaf or the source side. Then we have the D bit, destination policy applied bit. It indicates that the policy should be applied in the egress leaf. And that happens because the ingress leaf couldn't apply the policy. Then we have the S class, PC tag, or source group. All these names are alternatives for the same thing, the PC tag, which is a 16 bit policy control tag value representing the EPG that sourced the frame. You know, as we mentioned before, each EPG has a unique PC tag value, represents the EPG, and it is used to apply the policy. And the last field is the virtual network identifier, the VNIT. It is 24 bits VXLAN ID, represents the VRF segment ID in layer 3 forwarding, or the bridge domain segment ID in the layer 2 forwarding. We will see how these fields are used later in this section. Last thing to mention is that the spine sends the packet to the egress leaf and then the egress leaf decapsulate or remove the outer header and then send the packet to the egress interface towards endpoint 2. So in summary, in ACI, the original packet is encapsulated at a source VTIP with an outer header where the outer header references the source and destination locations, the egress leaf and the egress leaf switches. The underlay network device or the spines forward the packet based on the outer header while they are not aware of the original payload. At the destination VTIP, the overlay header or the outer header is stripped off and the packet is forwarded based on the inner header where the inner header references the source and destination endpoint identities. Alright, that's the end of this lecture. I hope it was easy and useful. Thank you for watching.